Chapter 2 Dviti Yod Ayaya You may be young, unlearned, and addicted to pleasures. You may be a servant or a householder. It doesn't matter. Does a jewel require a guru in order to be valuable? Or is it worthless simply because it's covered with mud? You may lack learning or literary skill. You don't require such qualities as these. Hold fast to the truth and let go of all else. Even an unpainted boat will take you across. The self appears as both the animate and the inanimate world. Yet it always remains in its own peaceful state. It is always pure consciousness, as calm as the sky. Though appearing as the animate and inanimate world, the self remains forever one. Where then is the division? There is no duality. It is clear to me. Indeed, I am the highest truth. I'm Shiva. I contain the world, both subtle and gross. I do not come, nor do I go. I have no movement. I have no form. I am unaffected by my component parts. Therefore, though the gods may worship me, in my perfect wholeness, I recognize no distinction such as gods. Neither doubt nor ignorance can cause the slightest ripple in me. Let the modifications of the mind continue to occur. They're merely bubbles rising to the surface of a pond. The ephemeral elements that form all things manifest in many different ways. Some things appear soft, others hard. Some things appear sweet, and others sour. The qualities of clearness Coldness and softness are but qualities of water. Likewise, matter and spirit, prakriti and parusha, are but qualities of the one existence. Beyond all speech, beyond all names, beyond the subtlest of all subtle things, Beyond mind, intellect, and the five senses, the stainless Lord of the universe remains ever one. If the universal self becomes known, how could I continue to be? How could you or the sentient and insentient world still be? The self is said to be like the sky. Indeed, it is like the sky. It's pure consciousness without any stain. It is truly the all-embracing whole. It remains unaffected, though it takes the form of earth, air, water, and fire. Though it takes all these forms, it remains always the same. All infinite space is pervaded by the self, but nothing else pervades the self. It is simultaneously within and without. It cannot be limited or divided into parts. It's extremely subtle, 
and cannot be seen. It's primary to all qualities, the yogis say. It is the state that underlies all other temporary states of the mind. By practicing yoga unceasingly, without attachment to anything, little by little, a yogi is freed from all effects of the qualities, gunas. Against the dreadful poison of worldly lust, which deludes men's minds, there is only one antidote, the nectarine awareness of the independent self. The subtle images are seen within, and the manifold forms are seen without, but the independent experiencer of both is known by all seers as the inner self. Experienced without, it's the universe. Experienced within, it is the power of life. And deep within that inner life, the real milk of the coconut resides. The outer knowledge is of the coconut's husk. The subtler knowledge is of the meat within. And concealed within that subtle core is the coconut milk of consciousness, the self. On a full moon night, the moon is seen by unhazed eyes as one, alone. The reality should also be seen this way. Where two are seen, that sight's impaired. Because there is one and only one, the mind which perceives two is false. He who teaches this is truly great. He deserves a thousand accolades. A guru gives the gift of wisdom to both the wise and the foolish man. But only he crosses over this ocean of life who attains the knowledge of truth for himself. He who is free from attachment, free from hate, engaged in securing the good of all, firm in knowledge and steady of mind, will reach at last to the highest state. The space inside a jar merges in the space outside when the jar is destroyed. The yogi, when the body is destroyed, merges into the universal consciousness, his own true self. The destiny of those devoted to action is the result of their thought at the end of their life. But the destiny of a yogi established in unity is not determined by his thought at the end. One may express in speech the destiny of those devoted to actions, but the destiny of those established in yoga cannot be told. They go beyond speech. A yogi has no particular path. He simply renounces imagining things. His mind then ceases of its own accord, and the perfect state just naturally occurs. Wherever a yogi may meet his end, whether beside a holy river or in an outcast hut, his births are through. He merges in Brahman. He who has realized the innate, unborn, incomprehensible self never becomes stained while enjoying the fruits of his desires. He remains always free of stain, free of karma. The ascetic concentrated on the self 
is never bound. He goes beyond illusion, beyond comparison, beyond form, beyond any support, beyond the body and its nourishment, beyond duality, fear, desire, and powers. It's the Lord, the Self, the Eternal, he attains. His attainment is not the Vedas, nor initiation, nor a clean-shaven head. It is not a guru, or disciples, or bountiful treasures, or the practice of postures, or wearing of ashes. It's the Lord, the Self, the Eternal He attains. He does not envision the form of the great Shiva or Shakti or any other gods. He does not see Kundalini or light forms or the feet of God. Nor does he perceive his own soul like a jar with its contents. It's the Lord, the Self, the Eternal he attains. That is the essence from which the sentient and insentient universe is born. It is like the ocean which gives birth to the foam on its surface. It is that by which everything is maintained and dissolved. It's the Lord, the Self, the Eternal He attains. His attainment is not breath control or fixed stares or yogic postures. Nothing becomes learned or unlearned at all. His attainment is not the purification of the nerves. It's the Lord, the Self, the Eternal He attains. He does not attain a many or a one that is separate from Himself. It is not something other, like an object with length and breadth. It cannot be objectively proven or compared with anything. It's the Lord, the Self, the Eternal, he attains. He may or may not attain concentration. He may or may not attain freedom from the senses. He may or may not. Abandon all actions. It's the Lord, the Self, the Eternal, He attains. Beyond mind, intellect, body, and sense organs, beyond the subtle elements and the five gross elements, beyond the sense of ego and even the ethereal body, it's the Lord, the Self, the Eternal, He attains. Transcending all dictates, he abides in the self. His mind becomes free of the thought of duality. Neither purity nor impurity nor distinctions of sex, nor fortune nor misfortune has any meaning for him. If the mind and speech can't reveal the self, how could the Guru's teachings Reveal the self? How could a guru reveal with words that essence of existence which is self-illuminating? In this song of the Advadhut composed by Sri Dattatreya, in this instruction on the wisdom of the self, this is the second chapter. Chapter 3 Tritriyodhayaya The distinction between with qualities and without qualities does not exist in him. He's beyond both attachment and non-attachment. Stainless, he's beyond all forms. He's beyond both qualities and the absence of qualities. Though formless, He's the substance of all forms. 
So how can I worship that Shiva who exists everywhere like space? Shiva is not white or yellow. He has no color at all. That supreme Shiva is both the cause and the effect. Truly, I am beyond the process of thought. I am Shiva. Tell me, friend, how can I bow the self unto the self? I'm neither beginningless nor with beginning. I'm a sun that never sets. I'm neither concealed nor unconcealed. I'm a sun that never sets. I'm neither illumined nor unillumined. I'm a sun that never sets. I'm nectarine knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere, like space. I'm desireless with desire. How shall I speak of that? I'm unattached with attachment. How shall I speak of that? I have no substance, and yet I have. What shall I say of that? I'm nectarine knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere, like space. I am undivided, yet I'm every separate form. What shall I say of that? I'm divided, yet I'm in everything. What shall I say of that? I'm both eternal and non-eternal. What shall I say of that? I'm nectary knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere, like space. I'm neither gross nor subtle. I neither come nor go. I have no beginning, end, or middle. I'm neither great nor small. I'm telling all the secrets of the supreme reality. I'm nectarine knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere, like space. Know well that all sense organs are made of emptiness. Know well that all sense objects are, likewise, emptiness. Know well that I'm the stainless one. I'm neither bound nor free. I'm nectarine knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere, like space. I'm beyond the intellect and inaccessible to the intellect. It cannot reach me. I'm beyond vision and inaccessible to vision. It cannot reach to me. I'm nectarine knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere, like space. I have no karma. I'm the sacrificial fire in which all karma's consumed. I have no sorrow. I'm the sacrificial fire in which all sorrow is consumed. I have no craving. I'm the sacrificial fire in which all cravings consumed. I'm nectarine knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere, like space. Sinless, I consume all sins. I'm the sacrificial fire. Dutyless, I consume all duties. I'm the sacrificial fire. Boundless, I consume all bondage. I'm the sacrificial fire. I'm nectarine knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere. Like space. I'm beyond non existence and beyond existence. These don't pertain to me. I'm beyond both union and separation. These don't pertain to me. I'm beyond both unconsciousness and consciousness. 
These don't pertain to me. I'm nectarine knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere, like space. I'm never swayed by attraction or repulsion. I never imagined these. I'm never swayed by happiness or grief. I never imagined these. I'm never swayed by passion or dispassion. I never imagined these. I'm nectarine knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere, like space. The clinging vine of worldly existence cannot affect me at all. Contentment and pleasures, however many, cannot affect me at all. The bondage of ignorance, this world of appearance, cannot affect me at all. I'm nectarine knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere, like space. The worldly turmoil produced by Rajo Guna has no effect on me. The suffering produced by Tamo Guna has no effect on me. The pleasure of righteousness produced by Sattva Guna has no effect on me. I'm nectarine knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere, like space. Neither troubles, nor sorrows, nor pleasures have any effect on my intellect, nor can the difficulties attending yoga have any effect on my mind. Whatever may happen to stir up the ego cannot affect me at all. I'm nectarine knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere like space. I've put an end to both wavering and unwavering. I don't even imagine thought. I put an end to both dreaming and waking. I neither sleep nor wake. I put an end to animate and inanimate. I'm neither moving nor still. I'm nectarine knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere, like space. I'm not the knower, nor something to be known, nor am I the cause of knowledge. I'm beyond the realm of speech, the mind, and the intellect. How could the ultimate reality ever be described by words? I'm nectarine knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere, like space. I'm beyond both division and non-division. I'm the absolute reality. Within, without, how could I be? I'm the absolute reality. I was never created. I'm not an object with substance. I'm nectarine knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere like space. I'm beyond the sorrows of attachment. I'm the one reality. I'm beyond the sorrows of destiny. I'm the one reality. I'm beyond the sorrows of worldly existence. I'm the one reality. I'm nectarine knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere, like space. Since I'm not the first three states of mind, how could I be the fourth, Samadhi? Since I'm not any of the three kinds of time, how could I be a fourth? I'm the root of serenity, the primal serenity. I'm the absolute reality. I'm nectarine knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere, like space. Terms such as long or short do not apply to me. Terms such as broad or thin do not apply to me. 
Descriptions such as angular or rotund do not apply to me. I'm nectary knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere, like space. No mother, father, daughter, or son ever belonged to me. Neither birth, death, nor the mind ever belonged to me. I am always unwavering, always steady. I'm the absolute reality. I'm nectarine knowledge. Unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere like space. My nature is boundless beyond such distinctions as pure and impure. My nature is boundless beyond such distinctions as attached or unattached. My nature is boundless beyond such distinctions as divided or undivided. I'm nectary knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere, like space. How could the god Brahma and all his attendants live there? How could the city of heaven with all its people live there? My only form is stainlessness. I'm the absolute reality. I'm nectarine knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere, like space. How may I speak of that stainless one who is both this and not this? How may I speak of that stainless one, who is the unsupported support of all. How may I speak of that stainless one who has no gender and yet has gender? I'm nectarine knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere, like space. I'm always the supreme, whether I'm active or inactive. I'm the highest bliss, beyond attachment and non-attachment. I'm everlasting bliss beyond both forms and formlessness. I'm nectary knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere like space. This Maya dream of a world has no effect on me. The crookedness and deceit of men has no effect on me. The truth or falsehood of men's speech has no effect on me. I'm nectarine knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere, like space. I'm beyond the distinctions of night and day. I can't be split in parts. I never wake from within myself. I'm never not awake. I'm never moved by thought at all. I never try to be pure. I'm nectary knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere, like space. I'm neither the Lord, nor am I not the Lord. I'm the formless self. I'm beyond the presence or absence of the mind. I'm the formless self. Know well that I'm free of everything. I'm the formless self. I'm nectary knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere, like space. I am a house that's empty. What may I say of that? I do everything and yet I do nothing. What may I say of that? I'm always in the even state. I'm the formless self. I'm nectary knowledge. Unchanging bliss, I'm everywhere like space. I'm beyond being a soul or not a soul. I'm forever shining forth. I'm beyond being a cause or not a cause. I'm forever shining forth. I'm beyond both nirvana and bondage. I'm forever shining forth. I'm nectary knowledge, 
unchanging bliss, I'm everywhere like space. Unlimited by a beginning, I'm forever shining forth. Unlimited by the continuing play, I'm forever shining forth. Unlimited by the destruction of all, I'm forever shining forth. I'm nectarine knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere, like space. Though you may be spoken of, you have neither name nor form. Whether you are divided or undivided, there's nothing here but you. O oh mind, O oh shameless wandering mind, why do you wear yourself so? I'm nectarine knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere, like space. Why do you weep and moan, my friend? There's no old age or death for you. Why do you weep and moan, my friend? There's no pain of birth for you. Why do you weep and moan, my friend? You can't be touched at all. I'm nectarine knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere, like space. Why do you weep and moan, my friend? You have no form of your own. Why do you weep and moan, my friend? You cannot be deformed. Why do you weep and moan, my friend? You can never become old. I'm nectarine knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere like space. Why do you weep and moan, my friend? You can never lose your youth. Why do you weep and moan, my friend? You can never lose your mind. Why do you weep and moan, my friend? You have no organs of sense. I'm nectarine knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere, like space. Why do you weep and moan, my friend? You can't be touched by lust. Why do you weep and moan, my friend? You can't be touched by greed. Why do you weep and moan, my friend? You can't be touched by infatuation. I'm nectarine knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere like space. How can you hanker after wealth? You have no property to support. How can you hanker after wealth? You have no wife to feed. How can you hanker after wealth? Nothing can be your own. I'm nectarine knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere. Like space. You and I are not attached to this world of ephemeral forms. It is only the shameless mind which divides the one in parts. Division and non division are the same to you and me. Unnectarine knowledge, unchanging bliss, I'm everywhere like space. Your nature does not contain even a little of dispassion. Your nature does not contain even a little of passions either. Your nature does not contain even a little of desire. I'm nectarine knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere, like space. There's no object of worship in your heart or in the state of samadhi. There's no object of worship in your heart or in the objective world. There's no object of worship in your heart. I'm beyond both place and time. I'm nectarine knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere, like space. I've told you all that constitutes the very core of truth. There's no you, no me, no superior being, no disciple, 
and no guru. The nature of the supreme reality is self-evident and simple. I'm nectary knowledge, unchanging bliss. I'm everywhere like space. How could the supreme reality be of the nature of bliss? How could the supreme reality be devoid of bliss? How could the supreme reality possess either knowledge or ignorance? If the supreme I am is the one existence, it's everywhere, like space. Understand that it's neither fire nor air. Realize the one. Understand that it's neither earth nor water. Realize the one. Understand that it neither comes nor goes. Realize the one. Understand that it's like space, pervading everywhere. Realize the one. My nature is neither emptiness nor fullness. My nature is neither pure nor impure. I'm neither with form nor without form. I'm the supreme reality. My nature is uniquely my own. Renounce, renounce the world of appearance. Then renounce renunciation as well. But whether you renounce or do not renounce, enjoy the nectar of your natural state. In this composition by Sri Dattatreya, called Song of the Advad Hut, in this instruction on the wisdom of the self, this is the third chapter. <laughs>